Oh my dear God. What a mess. Well, we can't work in this, so let's get cleaned up. That's looking much better. So anyway, welcome back to the DIY Beard. This is episode seven of the Bolt Build. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do go hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you get notified every time I release a video. Now, I did give you a sneak inside in the last episode of the Bolt Build that we will be doing some LED indicators. We tried to do it in the last episode. Unfortunately, the product that I received was faulty and I couldn't quite get it to work the way I wanted to on the bolt. So therefore we've had to go in a slight change of direction. Now as you can see, these are the LED bulbs, that I, sorry, LED indicators that I'm gonna be replacing them for. Um, they are much, much smaller than the stock ones that are currently on the bolt. Um, I've put that there just so you can see a comparison really, um, as we did snip them off as well in the last video. But as I said, what I would also do is put this back together so that when I do take it apart, you guys can see exactly what you need to do if you're looking to put LED indicators on your bolt. One of the other things we're also going to do involves this PVC pipe. Uh, not all of it, I do assure you. It is a little bit of an experiment and we don't know exactly if it is going to pull off, uh, but we'll soon see that. And I am going to try and get this bezel all painted black just to match the rest of the bike itself. Now while I have got you here, if anybody has a solution to what I can use for the fuel cap, please do reach out to me because I do want to get rid of that chrome. As of yet, I've scoured the internet and I can't really find anything appropriate. So if you guys know of anything I can use, please just hit me up in the comments below. So, as you can already see, we have the rear indicators already taken off the bike. Um, that's just because we did that in the last episode uh, when we were trying to fit the sequential set. But I put everything back together so you can see how I'm going to be tackling this today. Um, you've got two bolts there. They hold the entire bracket and the mudguard onto the chassis. And then you've got these bolts here that attach the mudguard to the bracket itself. And that just holds on like so. Now this side of the bike is already loose and off. Um, I've just done it this side so I can show you guys me taking it off. Now you will also need to remove the rear seat. There is a bolt that side just under one of the covers and that does then just slide off like so. Now, under here, this is your main wiring harness. And as you can see, I've already loosened that. That is the entire harness for the rear mudguard. So that does the tail light, it does the number plate LEDs, and it also does your rear indicators. So disconnect that before you start, hence the reason why we take the seat off. And then what you need to do is just remove these bolts here. So let's get that done now. We've now got the mud guard on the bench. Um, I've just put some covers down just to keep the paint weight nice and neat rather than scuffing it all up. What you've got here is, like I said, you've got the other two bolts on the bracket that hold that to the mud guard. Um, we'll remove those separately themselves. And then in here, you've got the rest of the wiring harness. Now, I've already snipped them off the indicators that came on the bike. What we're going to do is we're going to replace these ends with some bullet ends just to marry up to the new ones on the new indicators. And we're just going to give this bit of mudguard a bit of a clean as well just to get rid of the crap that's in there. 
Um, so let's put you on the bench and let's get cracking away with that for you again. Rear bracket is off. Now, luckily in the bracket, if we do need to use any of those resistors, there's plenty of space in there for us to slide that between the bracket and the mud guard itself. And then what I've gone and done is I've gone and removed those connectors. Um, like I said, I've got the spades on there at the moment. They were something that the previous owner had put on for the stock indicators. So my guess is he's already at some point had LEDs on the back of this and then put it back to stock before selling it to me. So we're going to chop these off and we're just going to put some bullet connectors on just so that marries up to the new connectors that come on the new LED bulbs and then what we'll do is we'll get those screwed on as well. Now these are a metal finish. The reason that I've done that is I do find that the plastic ones can crack um, and then water gets in etc and just over time they deteriorate a lot quicker. Uh, the metal ones though I've had these before on a previous bike and they seem to have lasted a lot longer so hopefully we'll get the same results with these. Inside here, what I like to do is fold the wire over the side just to get a better surface area for putting it in the end of there. You can quite put that up on the camera. However, the hole's slightly too small for the gauge of the wire. So, what I've got is I've got a pick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the pick into the end and then push it down just a little bit just to open that up inside so that we can then. Put the wire in, nice and snugly, and then crimp it down. As you can see here, there's quite a bit of wire left. Now what I don't want to do is start faffing about with that and cutting that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide some of it inside this trunk in here, just wrap it round and then we'll get that installed back on the mudguard. Like I said, I am going to give it a bit of a clean up. Uh, let's give that a bit of a wipe down, but that's just to show you how that's going to fit back on.
the mud guard back on. We've torqued everything up to spec, and as you can see, the indicators work. Now, one of the things that I have managed to do is I've nicked the wire on the number plate light, so we've only got one of those working at the moment. But the focus here is all around the rear indicators, and I think it's a huge change. A bobber for me needs to be very minimal and I think the existing lights that were on there, yes they are very functional and styling wise they're not actually that bad, but they're just big and they're just bulky. I mean if we look at the front ones which match, they're quite big. Eventually we'll figure something out for the front, but for now, switch that off, uh, we're just going to leave those on just because one of the other things I want is I want a front fairing um, and I need to obviously integrate the light somewhere on top of there. Um, I will start posting some pictures on Instagram and Facebook of the lights themselves just so you can have a bit of a closer look but I'm really pleased with them. Yes, I probably would have liked the sequential ones just because they flash in a particular way but the, these are brilliant. I, I can't fault them really. They were so easy to install. Um, you can do it yourself, like I said, as long as you've got some Allen keys, um, a bit of electrical um, equipment, so, you know, some snips, those sorts of things, crimps. You could do it yourself. Now, the next mod is going to be involving this huge bit of pipe. No, I'm not going to make my own exhaust out of PVC pipe. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to make covers to go over the top of these stanchions. Just again, just to give it a little bit more um, of a blacked out look and get rid of some of that chrome off there. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to measure a piece of pipe between there and there. I'm obviously going to then cut it from the section that I've got here. I'm going to put a slit down the middle so that I can slide it on and off. Um, it should fit quite snugly to be honest and then I'm going to spray it black now the reason that I'm doing this is I saw a YouTube video by Low and Mean and they sell a kit to do that for you their kit involves you taking the forks out sliding the covers in this section here and then mounting it back on however that seems a bit of a faff to me and I want the option that if it doesn't quite work out we can quite easily take them off. It is a bit of an experiment, I'm hoping it does work. Some of the experiments we've done in the past have worked quite well, so all of the paint that was used on there um, wasn't exactly meant um, to be heat resistant, but it's worked perfectly. There's no, there's no peeling as of yet on there. Um, we'll just see how it works. Now while I've got that off, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna black out this bezel. I missed it in the last time we painted it and then once I've put all the paint away I realised I'd forgotten it. Um, so it is something we're going to be picking up today. And then as I said, anybody that knows an option that I can use on there, please do hit me up in the comments below just so we can get rid of that. And then basically, all of the chrome that we want to um, is, is pretty much gone um, until we then start looking at the rear suspension, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the PVC pipe cut I'm going to show you a little bit of that um, and then I'm going to get everything all rubbed down ready for paint. So if we measure from here to here, we get a measurement of five and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and make a template first of five and a half inches on this piece of card. So then what I can do is I can wrap that around there like so. Make sure I've got enough and make sure that it works. And then what we can also do then is transfer that across to the PVC pipe.
this is what it looks like at the moment. Now, as you can see, I've not painted it because it is a different color than what's um, originally on the bike. It's not a gloss either. What I've had to go and do is buy some more PVC pipe just because the diameters are slightly different. So the diameter on the white pipe is a lot smaller than the black. And when I was trying to stretch that over, it was just leaving a huge gap at the side. So what I need to do now is I do need to rub them down. There is a little bit of play with them, so I might have to put some material um, between the stanchion and the inside of the cover just to give them a bit more of a secureness on there. But I'm really chuffed with them. I'm really chuffed with how chunky they look and just making it look a little bit meany at the front end. Um, these are just a little bit of a, an experiment really. Overall I do want a front cowl which should in theory cover all this area itself so these will be a little bit redundant later on down the line. But for now they work really well. So what I'm going to do is I've taken the bezel off and we've removed that from the gauge cluster there. So I'm just going to rub that down with some scotch bright, and then what I'm going to do is set everything up for painting. And so here we are. As you can see we've got the gauge all painted up now, that's a lovely shade of gloss black. Um, again I haven't really shown you guys how to do any painting because we've got a separate video that we did earlier in the build series. I just followed exactly the same process, rubbed it down, keyed it. Um, and then just sprayed it with the tough black. Again, same with the stanchions. All I've basically done is cut the PVC pipe to the same length, cut a slit down the middle so that I can slide those bad boys over, and then just painting them really. Now one of the things that has happened is there is a slight reaction to the paint so it has got a bit of a wrinkle finish it's not exactly smooth like it is on the bezel but to be honest it actually falls in really nicely because as you can see the cast on the aluminum there on the triple trees is well it's wrinkle finish anyway so it just fits just nice happy accident absolutely didn't mean that at all but I'm really chuffed with it. Really, really chuffed with it. It just makes the whole bike just that little bit meaning, that little bit more different than the rest of the bolts. And that's it really guys, that's all we've really got time for today. So please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you like the content of this video, then please do give it a bit of a thumbs up. Now, a bit of a reminder as well, I will be attending the egg run on the 29th of March for the Star Bikers. That's um, setting off, I think it's about 11am it usually is, from Britannia Stadium here in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, hope some of you guys can make it. I've had a couple of people already reach out to me to say that they're possibly attending. So it'll be great for you guys to come and support that charity. Um, like I said, thank you so much so far. Actually, during this filming, I've surpassed 100 subscribers. I can't tell you how how much of a bigger smile I had on my face when that happened and I couldn't really do all of this without the support of you guys. Uh, but that's enough from me so like I said please do like and subscribe and I'll catch you again soon.